Oh, hi there. My name is Leah and welcome to my channel. Today is Tuesday, so that means it's time for a true crime story while I get ready. I call this get ready with murder. I don't know. Um, so if you want to hear the crazy story of Sharon Kinney, aka La Pistolera, please make sure to stay tuned. Oh, and before we get started, I would absolutely love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. While I was cruising around the internet this week, I came across this story and I thought it was so crazy that it would be perfect for today's story. Um, so this is the story of Sharon Kinney, aka La Pistolera. Alright, so Sharon Kinney was born in 1939 to a single mother, which was kind of odd for the time, who was also an alcoholic. So this poor girl was, you know, kind of doomed from the get-go. And she lived in a small town in Missouri, so her, her alcoholic mom, not a good situation. So when she was 16, she met and fell in love with James Kinney. He was 22, so he was an older man, and they ended up having a summer romance and fling that got physical. You know, it happens. Teenagers are horny, that's how it is. Um, so he was, um, he was actually really religious, um, which was such a surprise to his family when they found out that Sharon was knocked up. And they found out right before James happened to be going back to college in the fall. Well, it turns out she wasn't actually pregnant. She just lied. So she would get him to stay with her because, I mean, Ob's home life was not awesome. Um, so they ended up getting married. Um, she faked a miscarriage, as you do when there's not actually a bun in the oven. Um, and then ended up actually getting pregnant a very short time later and ended up having their little girl. And that was in 1957, and her name was Dana or Dana. It's spelled D-A-N-N-A. -N -N so, I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be either. It could be Dana or Dana. Um, for the purposes of our story, it's going to be Dana. So she has Dana in 1957, and by 1960, they have another little baby named Troy. But, you know, it's been three years, total young marriage, not under the greatest circumstances that they got married. Marriage is on the rocks. Basically, Sharon wanted to have a fancier lifestyle than their middle class life afforded them. And there's also rumors that she was already having an affair. So let's see, they got married when she was 16. She's not even 20 at this point. She told James that she wanted a divorce. So this was in 1960. She wanted a divorce, $1,000 to keep the house and to have custody of Dana only and he could take Troy. Um, so he talked to his parents about this. I mean, he was still really young. He was only, what, 24? 526 at this point um so he decided to stick it out try to make the marriage work they've got two kids you know things will get better they're still young okay so on march 19th of 1960 james went to go lay down for a nap and he never woke up from that nap because he was shot in the back of the head so sharon called the police and when they showed up she told them the story that their daughter dana was allowed to play with her father's 22, was cleaning it and playing with it, and likely accidentally shot him in the back of the head while he slept. So no charges were filed. It was ruled in it as an accident, and Sharon got the life insurance money from the death of James. So after she was given the, um, her life insurance, her James's life insurance, you know, the first thing you do is go out and buy a new car. So she went to the local Ford dealership, bought a brand new Thunderbird, which is very practical family car um and while she was there met sales guy walter and um she and walter started having an affair mind you this was less than a month after her husband was accidentally killed so very shortly after the start of their affair she sharon told walter that oopsies She's pregnant again, but Walter, you know, he was married and he didn't want to break up his marriage. <laughs> so what do you do? You call his wife and you tell him that you want to meet because you have something to tell her. Well, so she met up with his wife, Patricia, and Sharon told Patricia that Walter had been having an affair with her sister, Sharon's sister, um, and she felt that Patricia just really should know about this affair that Walter was having with Sharon's sister. So, before this conversation, Patricia was dropped off by a friend to go talk to Sharon about her sister's affair. 
and got in was seen getting into Sharon's Thunderbird and was never seen or wasn't heard from again. When Walter got home that night and Patricia wasn't there and he couldn't find her, he was immediately suspicious of Sharon because uh, clearly she's a little bonkers. Um, and he did admit that he had gotten very angry with Sharon and had actually assaulted her, trying to get her to tell him where Patricia was. But Sharon, you know, held firm and she said she didn't know where Patricia was. And she even got an old boyfriend of hers to come and help and join the search party to look for um, Patricia to see if, um, you know, you know how the towns get together and do things like that. So she helped look for her. Um, so when the search party was done for the day, I have a weird smudge. Sisters, not twins, right? Um, Sharon went out with an old boyfriend and they decided to go to like a makeout spot and go like get busy in his car. And while they were out there, she says like, oh my gosh, what is that out there? I see something in the like reflection of the headlights out in the field. What could it be? Go investigate. So she makes him go look and lo and behold, it's Patricia's body. Sharon told her old boyfriend, John, to take her home immediately and not tell the police because that's exactly what he wanted to do. You know, like a normal person does when you find a dead body of somebody that you know is missing on the side of the road. Um, she wanted him to take her directly home and then tell the police, but not to tell the police that he was with her when they found the body. Um, so he said, yeah, okay. I mean, that sounds totally fine and normal. I'll take you home, but I won't tell anybody. So what he did was take her home immediately go to the police station tell the police that they found the body and that sharon was definitely with him when they found her very very easily so guess what sharon was arrested for the murder of patricia and her husband james and here's where it starts to get like even weirder so they put off her initial trial to um so she could give birth to her third child um, and then after that, when the trial finally did go forward, she was acquitted of Patricia's death, um, but found guilty of James's death. So she was sentenced to life in prison in 1962. Um, in 1963, her conviction was overturned on a technicality. And I don't know exactly what it is. I can, you know, find it if you guys want. I'll actually put the link to Murderpedia below. That's got like the crazy detailed information. So then a second trial was held and that was deemed a mistrial because they found out one of the jurors um, had used one of the lawyers uh, for like, you know, their own lawyer at some point in their life. So I guess that made the whole thing a mistrial. Then there was a third trial and the third trial was also a mistrial because of the um, using the shade Enchanted was um, split five to seven. So because they couldn't come to a unanimous or even a, like a good majority vote. Uh, so mistrial again, she was acquitted again and then the summer of 1964 rolls around while they're waiting for her fourth trial fourth trial to these very obvious crimes to begin she had a new latin lover and his name was samuel puglisi so maybe he wasn't latin at all they just went to mexico her and samuel got in a big old fight and she's like i'm out of here i'm going down to the bar she goes down to the bar and she meets a local man named francisco ordonez and guess what? They go back to his hotel room. <laughs> I love Sharon, she's crazy. <coughs> so, Sharon Francisco, not the guy she went on vacation to Mexico with. He's in their room thinking that they're still in a fight. Well, she and uh, Francisco go to Francisco's room. An argument ensues, Francisco gets shot and killed. When a hotel employee comes to the door to see, you know, what the gunshots are all about, she shoots him too. <laughs> so Miss Sharon, of course, gets arrested. Mexican officials take her back to the U.S. Embassy where she basically says that she's shot men. This is quote. I'm going to read it to you from the thing. The quote is that I have shot men before and managed to get out of it and thus earning her the nickname La Pistolera by Mexican newspapers, which basically means the gun woman or, um, you know, pew, pew, pew. Um, so in the, during the course of her investigation in Mexico, they did find out that the gun that was used to shoot the two men in the hotel was actually the same gun that killed Patricia. So she was clearly 
um, guilty, but thanks to double jeopardy law, she couldn't be tried for those crimes again. So now she's in Mexico. Killed a guy, wounded another man. She goes on trial and very clearly is guilty and is found guilty. And then she is sentenced to 10 years in prison. So she appeals this because she thinks she can like, she thinks she's above the law and can get away with literal murder. Um, so my little toothbrushes. So upon her appeal, this is great. So upon her appeal of 10 years, she was, so for murder, attempted murder, she was given 10 years in a Mexican prison, which is probably not awesome. Um, upon her appeal, the judge reviews her case and deems that her original sentence was not harsh enough and adds three years to her sentence. So now she's up for 13 years in Mexican prison because she thought she's too good. She can get away with it. She's too fancy. For mascara today, I am going to do a mixture of Unlashed from Wander Beauty and their Real from Benefit. I like this one because it curls and this one because it's long and spiky and dries really hard. So she's given 13 years in prison, goes back to prison, and somehow in 1969 manages to escape prison. She gets out of a Mexican prison and is actually never seen again. To this day, nobody knows what happened to Sharon Kitty. <laughs> she has this crazy story and got away with it scot-free. Like everyone knows that she's guilty, but she's out there living her life somewhere. I'm using ColourPop bronzer and blush today. Um, so lots of rumors as to what happened to Sharon once she got out of prison. The most popular one is that she escaped to Guatemala um, and just started a whole brand new life there, which I don't know I guess it's possible she's pretty it seems like she's pretty savvy and getting through life and through the world but it just doesn't make sense that a young ish like a 30 year old she's only 30 at this point um, American woman would know how to navigate Central America in order to get to Guatemala and like start a whole new life over so I mean, it's possible, or anything's possible. But the more popular and probable um, theory is that she probably didn't actually escape prison. She was probably killed by a guard. And they're, instead of saying, yeah, she's dead, um, she, you know, attacked a guard or whatever she did, she, um, they said that she had escaped prison and now has never been seen again. However, she does still have an active warrant for arrest in Missouri to this very day. <laughs> so that is the story of La Pistolera Sharon Kinney. I think it's Kinney. It's K-I-N-N-E. And I'm saying Kinney because there was a guy I went to school with and that was his last name. So I'm opting for that to be the answer. So what do you guys think? Isn't that crazy? I've never heard this story before and I thought it was so interesting and there were so many twists and turns and when I get to the end and they say that she just escaped from prison and disappeared into who knows where in Central America. It was just like what? How have I never heard of this before? It's crazy. Um, so that is today's story. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you saw that ending coming at all because I know I sure didn't. Oh, I am using, okay, and I'm using the NYX Sweet, Sweet Chateau in Bottoms Off, which I hate the name of it. I just think it's a pretty color. All right, you guys, that is it for today's Get Ready With Murder. I hope you liked the story. I thought it was a very, very interesting one, especially one I've never heard before. So if you guys like this, please, please, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps my channel. And I love you forever. All right, have a super great rest of your day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, 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 bye.